And the glorious domination continues, and here we are with the Cauldron Born B, also known as the Ebon Jaguar B, if you're a Smoke Jack pilot. Uh, yeah, background wise, there isn't much else about the Ebon Jack uh, that I didn't mention in the Alpha video, if you haven't seen that already. Um, I think by the time of Operation Bulldog, i.e., the uh, extinction of the Smoke Jaguars as, a, as an organised clan, uh, this mech had largely replaced most of the heavy contingent, and had even uh, seen a fairly uh, extensive use in some of the other clans outside of a few, such as Wolf and Coyote. But uh, yeah, for the majority, uh, the Ebon Jaguar was slowly outpacing the Hell Hellbringer in its uh, popularity. I was not to say the, uh, the Hellbringer ever ceased to be produced, as some clans still kept them, but the Cauldronborn was winning on that front and was becoming the de facto uh, heavy mech uh, of the clans in the 65 ton range. Uh, so the Bravo is very different from the Alpha in that it has 7 energy hardpoints but has no ballistics. Uh, to cover this it has a particularly nasty punch, a couple of large pulse lasers, a couple of ERPBCs and some medium pulses with a beagle probe and there should be a tag laser but I think uh, in my haste to build this for recording, I forgot to put the tag laser on. I haven't replaced it with anything else, so it just has the guns, but it should have a tag laser on there. Uh, which does bring up one, one of my issues with um, the decision to have equipment slots marked as weapons. The tag laser being marked as energy doesn't make sense because you're effectively giving the variant an extra weapon um, that it shouldn't normally have. Uh, this also goes with Narc Beacons as well, counting as a missile hardpoint, which, why does it count as a missile hardpoint? It fires a very low velocity projectile, um, it, I don't know. it just seems odd, it just seems like you're further compounding an issue with some builds by just giving them extra firepower potentially by, you know, with an extra weapon slot, so I don't know why tag isn't marked as equipment the same as uh, Nart Beacons and AMS counts as its own slot, so does ECM, so why do those two pieces of equipment? Whatever. Maybe that'll get changed in the future, but who knows. So, the Bravo though is a pretty uh, well-rounded build. Uh, it has no weapons in the CT, all of its hard points are split between the side torsos and arms. Uh, that said, you do have to expose a little more than I'd like of the mech to get the shots off, but when you do, you've got some pretty high-mounted uh, energy hard points in the side torso, so the arms are going to be doing the business end of your work when you're out in the open and you're up close and personal. You're going to be peak shooting uh, with the, the torso mounted weaponry. Uh, it on paper looks like it would be a lot hotter than the Alpha but it's actually a bit more manageable if you just chain fire the PPCs and keep the lasers for when things get a little too close to you. It actually works out quite well. Uh, it also works well as, uh, as a frontline kind of uh, tip of the spear type mech because of the beagle probe that comes with it. It means that any ECM mechs that are nearby can't really use that as cover when they're behind buildings, uh, which is really great on maps like Grimplexus because you can spot them on the other side uh, quite early on uh, so they don't get that advantage. But, uh, that says, for customization purposes, sky's the limit really. Uh, a seven hardpoint uh, heavy mech, especially in the clan tech uh, phase, so thanks to my cat walking in front of me, uh, is a particularly useful for those who like to come up with new funky builds for the Cauldron Run. And yeah, you can. Uh, I've seen all kinds of this. I've, I've seen uh, straight up pulse builds. I've seen uh, long range snipers that focus on lots of heat sinks and just having a few core pieces of equipment. Um, I've seen ones that have come with a vast array of all colours of the rainbow type clan weaponry at this point with uh, ER large, medium, small, micro lasers, you name it, they had it. So yeah, this this thing is, if you like running mechs like the Crab or uh, other heavies that are similar to like the Grasshopper and stuff like that, this will probably fit in quite nicely for you if you like that kind of uh, all energy gameplay. Um, not really much else to say about it then, really. I'll, I'll probably just leave it there. This was another map that was on Grimplexus, which seemed to just be the order of the day when I was recording these lots of choices of Grimplexus for some reason. I guess it's quickly becoming people's new favourite map, from what I can tell, that and HPG. Um, I would I'd recommend picking up the Bravo if you haven't already. It's a particularly fun build, it's straightforward, it's quite simple. I, I was, uh, I've always said that I quite like mechs that have a pretty simple uh, layout for their builds. It allows you to focus more on 
firing and getting the kills, or at least blowing parts off the mechs, than having to fiddle around with worrying about your rangers and stuff. And the such. As I said, with the seven half points in this, it allows you to very easily focus on a couple of weapon groups that are comfortable for your sort of range, and then you can just get on with the, with the work of getting the kills and earning those seagulls and XP. So, yeah, um, that'll be that for the Evan Jag Bravo. I'll leave the rest of the match here. I hope you have a good week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Target spotted. Target destroyed. Target destroyed.